Hi, I'm Mark Dettel, Director of Public Works for the City of Santa Cruz. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about how we judge Mesa bridges. Um, some of the things that we see in the bridges and why we tend to have been seeing it, ones that get disqualified and things we'd want to kind of help you out, maybe give you some tips. Okay, this is the setup for the stick together testing apparatus. Right, and when you see this bridge, the the maximum bridge l length is 17 inches. This bridge is actually only 16 inches, and so he's not taking advantage of the full bearing width of the bridge. So when any loading that happens on this bridge goes right to the center of the bridge, and it's got to transfer to the bearing support, so you're putting more load on the edge instead of taking full advantage of the width. Okay. So this bridge is at a disadvantage of a bridge that would have been an inch longer. Do you want to switch it with that one? Yeah. And this is also a stick together bridge. You can see they're two different, very different designs. You have to See, in this case, the bridge, the bearing plate, there's really no bearing surface on the top of the bridge to take the plate. So we have to put the plate on the inside of the bridge. And then we have to apply either a block or something to load the bridge from the inside. And these bridges both had the same specifications, but this person chose to take all the all the loading from the roadway, which if you look at the bottom of the roadway, you just have the one thin section of one popsicle stick, as opposed to the loading that this bridge is going to support with a much more reinforced um, series of, of um, triangular members. Now this bridge has a little, a different issue, and it's unfortunately, you, when you do something like this, you have to look at the gluing situation, and this bridge was disqualified because several of the members had more than 50% that, that had glue on them. So you can only glue a member on 50% of the side. So the, the outside ones were fine, but as you get further inside, you can see some of these members are almost completely glued. And that disqualified this bridge. Okay. Um, I guess the, the most important thing to look at are the specifications on the bridges. Um, they're very clearly described in the instructions, and those are the, the things that we have. We tend to disqualify bridges. Um, just either they're they're too short, the bridge may be too short, it may not be wide enough. It may not. It may not have a, a roadway completely across the bridge. It would stop, but yet it has extensions out further. Um, those seem to be the simple things that could be um, evaluated actually before you you turn in your bridge and clearly corrected. Um, it's really frustrating for the student to get to the competition he's all excited he or she's all excited about their bridge and then they find out it was disqualified it's a it's actually though a, an important lesson Mesa really helps teach uh, understanding the, the restrictions and the specifications and following those specifications um, one of the things we do see a wide variety of, of popsicle stick bridges. You can see this bridge has a, a roadway on the top. This bridge has the roadway on the bottom. And 
but a covered top. And then this bridge has a similar roadway on the bottom, but it has a reinforcement on the bottom and, and some decorative items on the top. There's one of the things to think about is where's the loading going to fit on the bridge and how is it going to be transferred to the supports on the sides. And a lot of the, the extra members that are added to bridges, are they helping or are they adding weight? And so that's something that when your student has a lot of extra members, and you can see this one's very detailed. They've numbered every member to make sure they use the exact amount. But some of them, they just may have added extra weight and not added extra strength. So that's important. So we've touched on glue, too much glue, we've touched on um, making sure that the dimensions, it's wide enough, it's long enough, but not too wide or too long. Those are really critical. And the gluing, less than 50%. We've seen bridges like this carry uh, up to 200 pounds, and some of them, if they aren't glued, don't have good glue at the joints or haven't been done early enough and allowed to cure can only carry a few pounds because they'll start to break apart. So if you can encourage them to get their bridges done early and let it let it cure, that's that's a really good advantage that they will have. The other thing to think a little bit about the property of the wood. The wood itself when you load a bridge, you're going to have members that are being pulled or in, in tension and members that are being pushed in compression. If you pull wood, it's much stronger than if you push wood. So you need to think about where do you need to have extra reinforcing? Is it going to be being pulled or is it going to be being compressed? So as the bridge transmits the load, some of the members at the bottom will be, if they bend, some of those will be in tension, and the ones at the top will be in compression. So you'll see how that load is transferred. And try to visualize when you load that bridge, how is that loading going to get over to the abutment? And is that design that you've come up with, is that a good way to transmit that load, an efficient way to transmit that load? Because what we do is we take the weight that the bridge carries and the weight of the bridge, and it's a factor, and you so you look at the most efficient bridge. You may have a bridge that carries more loading, but weighs a lot more than a lighter bridge that carries almost as much. So that's how we score. Talk a little bit also about bridges in the community and what, what this project is. This project is really about getting kids excited about engineering, getting them interested in, in learning about how to how to build something and then how to test it and see how it works and learn from not just their bridge design but the other bridge designs that are done and so it's you see a lot of learning at the actual event um, people are watching about the bridges as they take on more and more load and there's you actually have kids cheering for bridges that are breaking is pretty interesting and, and fun Okay. Let's talk a little bit about um, how to have an efficient bridge. What does that What does that make sense? And, and so, first, you want to look at the specifications for the bridge, and and how how long it can be, how wide it can be. But you also want to look at what kind of support that you're going to have, and what what is it going to be resting on? Is where are the abutments? The supports that this bridge is going to set on, and some something to, to think about is all the load that transmits from a bridge from the top into the bottom has to go into the total bearing area or the area that this bridge sits on the supports or the abut. They're called abutments in, in real life, and what you can do is. If a lot of times a bridge will fail right at the abutment, if, you, if it's a solid bridge and everything gets transferred to the abutments, the more 
space that you have sitting on that abutment spreads that load out so you don't overstress these individual members at the ends. It's the same thing when you apply the load at the top. If you have more, more support at the top, that's going to spread that load out over more members instead of just one or two or just on the edge here. This bridge, you can see when you put the load plate right on there, it's spread over an enormous amount of members. So each individual member doesn't take as much loading. So that's going to be a very strong bridge. It's much heavier. It's a little heavier than this one is, but you can see it's very dense. Same thing on the bearing plate. You can see how all of these members are sharing that load. Where here, you have very few members that are taking the same loading that has to transmit it to the, to the abutments. It is, it is good, though, to have a variety of designs. I think if everybody did the same design, it's as a learning experience, I don't think you're all going to learn you won't see the variety of how the, the bridge will perform or deform. It actually deforms during the testing. Uh, and so the kids won't have as full of learning experience as everybody. If there's just one bridge design that's given to the, the kids and they they all do the same design. Then you're just measuring the craftsmanship of the, of the construction. We've seen some very creative designs with these bridges a lot. Typically, you'd expect the roadway going straight, but we've seen curved roadways. We've seen, um, you know, almost an arch type roadway. So there's all variety of bridges that have been, been tried and very creative.